Welcome to Nexus Edge, the show that will help you get an edge on the competition. My name is Turd Herder, and I'm your esteemed host of Nexus Edge. Today, I'm joined by my stupendous panel. Starting at the top, we have our regular guest. Whoa, no, this is Ziltoid. Yeah. This way. It's going. It's going good. Our other regular guest, we have Whoa, no. Oh, that was so close, Turd. So close. <laughs> Just I think I got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we've been joined by last week's caster of the week. It's B Train. Who he let is. him in here? Get him yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to leave. It's nice here. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the Chicago Bulls flag. So he brought us cookies. We'll keep him around for this week. Yeah. Yep. We have <laughs> cookies to share. It's family size because we're a family here at the Nexus Edge. Good enough for me. All right, uh, B Train, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah. So uh, I've been playing Heroes, just you know, as far as gaming is concerned, since uh, Alpha, and I've been playing Blizzard games pretty much my whole life. I'm from the East Coast. I'm from North Carolina, but some of you already know that I'm in Alaska right now. Uh, I'm in the military, so I'm stationed up here. That explains all of it. I didn't choose to be isolated on a crazy rock with lots of bears, but you know what? They're actually pretty nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> As for casting, I accidentally casted two games for the Zul'jin tournament uh, about a month and a half ago. Those were my first cast ever, and everybody loved it. So I just kind of kept going, and, well, we all saw what happened. Now I'm a guest star on this up-and-coming new Jumpstart show, The Nexus Edge. There I was go. actually uh, tag-teaming with B-Train last couple times. It's been fun. Tag-team. Very nice. Got the VODs <laughs> of that somewhere? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and before we move on, I do want to give a quick shout-out to last week's uh, guest panelist, Voodoo. He's helped us out with this uh, wonderful uh, overlay that you see here. We have the, uh, the, the list to the side of the screen. Um, so thank you very much for helping us out with this. Yeah, this way. Um, it, it looks great. We really appreciate it. So, and I hope that you guys enjoy it too. So, All right, moving on, we have questions from the community. So we uh, recently got a new channel in the NGS Discord. It's the hashtag Edge Questions. Um, and we were fortunate enough that some people uh, gave us some good questions. So we're going to go through and we're going to answer them. Um, and you guys out there, if you uh, have any more questions, go ahead and drop them in the uh, Edge, quest Edge Questions channel. And uh, we'll be sure to take a look at them. So the first one. And we'll start with this with B Train. It seems like a good one for you. What is your most embarrassing moment in uh, Heroes of the Storm? My most embarrassing moment. I think it has to be when my team was trying to run Juice Pirates. This was our first time. Uh, we got a. We were on Warhead because we were running it in unranked, and I was the. I was the whole leader of this this outfit, this this ragtag D team. <laughs> And uh, we we got the keep at like six and a half minutes, and we had it all planned out, and we medevac to the core with our Tyrael and our Morales and our our Zarya, our Jimmy, and our Gray Main. Who'd you forget out there? Nobody. We got everybody. But uh, we get all to right. the core, and we're like, dang, we just wasted Sank, and the core still at a hundred percent. We didn't get the first uh, fort. Yeah. That, uh, oh. So. <laughs> We uh, medevac cheesed a core that was protected, and then we ended up trading five kills, and then we just sat there, and then we all died to the key, the core. Very nice. It's my most Very unfortunate moment. <laughs> <laughs> Mona, what about you? What's your most embarrassing moment? Oh, that's a good question. Aside from coming on here every week and making a fool of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, ooh, I don't have a good story like a, like a failed cheese, cheese pirates. Juice Pirates. Huh. Well, I got a good one. I'll go. You keep thinking about yeah. it. Ziltoid, you're coming up next. So, no, you don't have... You're not embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> no, I so just this, have too many to pick. And yeah. <laughs> hard to remember. It's the opposite the Terrible, problem. terrible moments that I've had in Heroes of the Storm. So, mine was... I was playing... I think we were just playing Nexus Cats practice or something. And I was actually streaming it. And it was... I just got my brand new web camera. Like, I was checking it out. Get, making sure everything works, right? You know, I did the whole, you know... Record it ahead of time. Make sure the sound's working and everything. It's great. 
It actually happened to be at the same time as an NGS Mead Hall. They let out of the NGS Mead Hall and they hosted my channel. So I got like 30 viewers, like all these people. And like, I'm like, wow, you know, hey, welcome, you know, great. Thank you so much. And then I was talking about, I was listening to music at the time, like these like chill beats, like they're awesome, like just hitting every right note. And I was like, oh, I hope you guys love this. Like, this is great. Like I'm bobbing my head. So I go and I watch the cast, no sound. So it's just me talking about the sound, talking about how awesome the music was, asking questions about the music, nothing. And not a single person said anything. And it was just like, wow, this is just great. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Let's see yeah, that though. Can't toss it. <laughs> Because everybody was like, you know what? We're just going to let you listen to your music and believe. And nobody was like nice enough or they were all too nice to say anything. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so now, I mean, it was a good lesson. So you got to check it every time, whatever. So that was good. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to another question. Unless, whoa, did you think of one? No, all my failures are on a much more minuscule scale where it's just me doing dumb <laughs> shit. <laughs> Nothing grand and like worth mentioning, which is almost even worse, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is actually a really good one and kind of topical. Uh, so we'll start with Ziltoid here. How much does professional level play influence your enjoyment of the game? And it's topical because obviously HGC is gone. You know, Hots is a dead game. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the probably the most. It influenced it probably the most. I mean, I really kind of got into this game by starting to watch a lot of professional stuff. Like, I was playing Tech Alpha and stuff like that, but, like, what really got me into the competitive scene and everything was watching, like, YouTube VODs of Kaldor doing some casting, like, back in the day. Um, you know, Solid Jake and all of those guys before HGC even started. That was kind of uh, Four Court Jester was one that I like to watch a whole lot. Yeah. He was actually on some of the first um, ones that came up. So, like, um, I think the professional scene for me, you know, it was really the first esport that I ever got into. Like, I, di I didn't really watch esports prior to Heroes of the Storm and the professional level of play is one of the major reasons and why I did it. Um, you know what I enjoyed about it for sure. Now I really like the amateur scene and just competitive hots, but that's the yeah. thing about Heroes of the storm. It's it, you know, it, it's really at its best form in a competitive setting because it's a true team game, which I can't really say about all the other MOBAs. And I've, right. I've tried to watch them to get into them too. And it just, it's They're not hard the to watch. It's not it's, the same. Yeah. What about you B train? So, all right. With that, so, what was like the exact question again? I don't want to like go off on a crazy tangent. No. <laughs> How much does professional level play influence your enjoyment of the game? And I made it specifically this game, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, I think back when like the professional play was still like a big part of the game when HCC was around. Yeah, I I think it. I almost it kind of acted to me as like kind of like a dampener kind of like a downer because everybody knows i like chen chen's kind of like the hero of my channel all my stuff's like after <laughs> chen's so that's my boy but chen like after you know 2016 didn't see a, a professional play hardly ever and when he did it was a joke so like for me it honestly almost seemed kind of like a restraint and i like a lot of other people too because i know personally like a lot of my friends enjoy the memes as well one of my buddies is a huge diva main and uh you know, we we all when we would play semi competitive would look at it and be like, oh, you know, well the pros don't play this, they play this, and I think a yeah, lot right. of people had that kind of same effect, and they would be like, well, this is what the pros play, and we want to be like them, and we want to emulate that because it works. Right. And uh, I think a lot of people just kind of forgot to have fun, and I was one of those people. I completely got lost in the sauce of pro and meta, and right. I didn't have as much fun. So I think now that it's gone, I think it's kind of freed up a lot of people. So like yeah. it's 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 you know it sucks that it's gone, but I think it's actually kind of been a nice release for some of the people playing like the semi pro scenes. Very nice. What about you, Wo? Uh, yeah, kind of agree with the guys here. Pros and cons to the pro scene in HGC. Oh, yeah. uh, for me specifically, I didn't really get playing the game until Heroes 2.0, and even then, I was very casual and very bad, yeah. uh, and kind of just tuned into a an early HGC match on a whim and really fell in love with the game and really got excited watching it. And that's kind of what drew me to the Heroes Reddit and then subsequently to NGS. So I didn't join until uh, Season 5 last season, so I was a pretty new addition to NGS. But uh, HGC and Professional Heroes was really kind of what brought me into the game. Yeah. And um, 
now that it's gone though i've really found a home here i really enjoy the amateur scene the community the people involved and while we kind of took the hit and it was difficult to see the loss of hgc specifically how blizzard went about it how a lot of the people who were employed the players the casters all kind of just got dumped without very much right afterthought um you want to go i don't really want to go down that rabbit hole yeah. of the effective yeah. hgc though because i'm sure that's something we all have that's and it could be like a lot of opinion hour hour long topic so <laughs> yeah. but after kind of the initial aftershocks of that seeing the community rally around amateur hots and right. uh like b train said having that pro scene kind of put almost like creative constraints and dampers on amateur teams and who they were willing to draft and what heroes they're willing right. to play and it's just really kind of opened up some more possibilities people are more open to having fun trying weird things and seeing what works because the meta is basically just whatever we make the meta to be now so there's no saying that this has to be meta and this doesn't have to be very nice yeah and i i pretty much echo everyone's sentiments i mean i i watched professional hots but i didn't really like i i didn't watch never it to invest too... it into it yeah, like I, you know what I was invested in getting those goofy little uh, stickers and talent, mm. you know, whatever. The <laughs> I was the exact opposite. I literally watched every weekend. I had yeah. my favorite teams. I oh, watched yeah. all the tournaments. Mm -hmm. Like it was a big event for me, and it's it's kind of been like ever since like HGC and even before that, the prior um, uh, professional scene is gone. It's almost yeah. like there's this void of things that I would normally schedule time to do and it's just not there my twitch viewage um a lot of the people i used to watch on twitch just <coughs> games so like yeah. really had to restructure things but it's not exactly all that bad like there's the you know that was also a big time sink for me so like oh yeah now that it's done i actually have more time to put into other things <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like a pro and a con well and this year if it was if we were going to see hgc 2019 i was I was going to invest the time to actually watch some right. stuff, you know, cause I started watching mid, I think right after mid season, uh, what was it called? Mid season, mid season, mid -season brawl, mid season brawl. I started watching right after that and brawl too. Yeah, it, and it was. And then, um, you know, I started playing in season five, you know, I, I played a little bit in uh, heroes lounge playing in season six. Um, you know, so it's just kind of the natural progression. Um, but obviously we're all still here. Um, so it hasn't impacted, you know, terribly too much but definitely uh definitely a good question um all right here's a good this is a good one this is a fun one if you could pick the next blizzard universe hero to join the game who would it be hmm. let's start with you ziltoid oh geez put me right on the spot yeah right <laughs> there's a lot of heroes that i like that are already in um so how about like we hit somebody else up while I think about it? All right, whoa. Uh, I was a World of Warcraft fanboy for the longest time. That's how I got into <laughs> Heroes of the Storm is through World of Warcraft. So there's like still so many characters oh, yeah. out there that would be just absolutely incredible. Um, I'm partial to to Shadow Priests. I played a lot of Priests as one of my first classes. Um, Alonzo's full is a good. He does not like character. <laughs> uh, Moira Bronzebeard could be a good shadow priest. Either yeah, that or one of the the Eridar leaders, Kill Jaden, uh, Archimond. I think they'd be really cool additions to the game. Oh yeah, Archimond would be legit. And such good raid fights if you haven't done them. So yeah. much fun. <laughs> I haven't. What about you, B Train? I want you all to imagine a world. Growing up playing warcraft 3 my favorite mission is the one where the orcs drink the blood of manoroth they turn red and you get to go kill scenarius you get to fight them and you get these cool orcs that you only get to play for the one mission so i remember when i was looking when they released it was either Kel'Thuzad or malganis they were they were yeah. dropping teasers for it and i was like this is it it's manoroth and i was freaking out yo because like that would be such a banging hero to put in the game so for me, it's got to be if I would if I could pick one, it's Manoroth nice. or one of at least just a Pit Lord because I feel like Pit Lords are such like a this crazy like BA entity of World of Warcraft that after BC kind of just died along with like yeah. the Eridar Lords and so like for me that's that's like my ultimate what I want to see. Well, and they're a tavern hero in 
World yep. of Warcraft three. And from so Zabron. like, it's it, it. There's plenty of like precedent to have yep. a pit lord in there. Yeah, and oh, yeah. first would be probably the most iconic. The only other one I can think of is from Legion, which fantastic expansion, probably my favorite from War Out Wow. But yeah. Um, but even then, like I said, Manoroth is way more mm-hmm. lore well known. Yeah. 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 I did think of mine though. Go, go for it. Anduin Lothar. Oh, you know, let's go way back. Isn't okay. he, but, uh, the one that was teased maybe to be the next hero? No, Anduin no, Rin. No, no, that would be Sorry. Anduin yeah. Rin, which is confusing because obviously he's the Very. namesake. Yeah, right. But Lothar, um, you know, lore wise was always one of my favorite characters going back to Warcraft Orcs and Humans, which I played. And this is way, way back. So um, he would be a fantastic addition. Something more realistic, though, that I'd probably more likely see would be Grom Hel's Hellscream, which also would be yes. awesome to have. Thank yep. you. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. For me, Can't I have uh... Manoroth and no Grom Hellscream. <laughs> True. So, yeah, like, they need to come in at like the room. same time or like succession. Kind of like uh, Gul'dan and Medivh. Did. Yeah, right. Like, you, just, you can't have one without the other. So that's all Warcraft heroes, right? Yeah, they're the easiest yeah. ones to think of for the most. It's the most like lore our... that isn't in the game because there's just so much lore, right? You, you could do. Um... I would. Oh, so mine... They gave him a name from Diablo One, uh, the Warrior. Um... Oh, uh, I should know this because I, re- I was going to say, Aiden. I really, really, Aiden. Yep. Yep. I'm actually going to go with Adria as a hero, like spider Adria or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'd be a really cool hero. She's like a blood hero. So you could do some cool, like life stealing type things. Um, and I think she was, pro- in my opinion, she was one of the best bosses from, uh, Diablo three. Um, but I think that was Reaper of souls, right? Yeah. Re- Reaper yeah. of souls. So um, that would be my pick. I think okay. she's probably the, of all the ones we've mentioned, probably one of the most likely. Um, at least for like Diablo, she's like kind of the next yeah. iconic. If they're not going to start digging into like D two heroes like Andariel or well, they could uh, do, yeah, they could Bale. do any of the uh, the uh, the major demons. Uh, Bale, it's not like I was going to say Ball or Ball or Bale, yeah, however it's said, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's Bale, but I can't remember what yeah. the actual pronunciation is. All right, let's uh, move on and uh, let's go to our last question here, real quick. It's one of one or two option: bacon or sausage? B train. Bacon. Yeah, easy. Bacon. Oh no. It depends. <laughs> That's a bad too complicated. So <laughs> sausage, and I'll tell you why. Variety. You got. Way yeah. more variety than bacon does. See, that's how you know sausage is the batter, the batter, the worser <laughs> of the two, because for sausage you have to have a variety. Bacon, there's only one because they nailed it the first time. <laughs> there is point. variety in bacon, though. It's yes, but bacon, it's Canadian bacon, bacon and it's bacon. always on the ladder. No, no, the no, bottom. no. We're talking about Maybe like bacon. Maple, is just ham. Like, let's bacon, not like, fool ourselves here. <laughs> peppered bacon. There's apple smoked bacon. So don't tell yeah. me there's not variety in bacon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to say we need the variety of the bacon to make it good because we've I've already never got said it. that. <laughs> no, but you, but you were like sausage. I never variety. said that. I just said it has. I knew more this was going to be the most controversial thing here. <laughs> said it has more variety. Uh, I'm a this sausage is a, patty. This is guy. very contentious. Though. There we go. Sausage patties. Whoa. Still on the fence. I mean, it depends on what they're going in. Like, I I like both of them. Full breakfast. Give me both. Like, I don't want to choose. Sausage patties, great. Bacon, great. Let's now you can wrap. You can wrap. You can wrap things with bacon, which you can't really do with sausage too well. That's there's not true. One thing, but you can definitely there is no bacon patties. So there's that too. So like, you know. There you go. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Uh, let's talk about stuff that happened this week in our personal NGS games. So B Train, start us out. What uh, what's going on? We got a two zero. There you go. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. <laughs> we actually didn't play last week. It was the week before. Um, we played against Zuljin Distillery, and oh, okay. it was That's we we were warned beforehand. Someone was like, "Oh, you know," because we were in their tournament for the off season. Uh, a bunch yeah. of like the Div C Div D teams were, and um, we got warned by an unnamed source beforehand. They're like, "Yo." They're on their stuff now, boy. Like, you guys thought you saw them in the tournament. We were like, it's whatever. Like, so we get into game one and they take us to a map that we really don't adore. And I'm not going to say the name because if you watch the VOD, you know. Yeah. But 
They banned a specific hero against a specific player in game one. Yeah. They banned, they banned Gul'dan, and so, of course, <laughs> I hit him I hit him with the Kael'thas, and it was pretty magnificent. Uh, I think it was Graves that casted that game, and he incorrectly gave Genzor's credit for my B-steps. So I wanted <laughs> to point that out here so we have evidence. So the record uh, is clear. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then... Game Take two, crap together, Gravesville. Yeah, exactly. And then Please. game two, uh, we get into eyes, the draft. Man. We draft the same exact four heroes in the same exact order. We get down to my pick, and so for the third ban, Gul'dan doesn't get banned this game. It's Kel'thas, and I literally had three people watching the stream message me the moment the ban went through. They were like, "Well, this game's over. You're picking Gul'dan," and then I locked it. And then I proceeded to b-step an unacceptable amount, at which I expected <laughs> to be talked to. But it never happened. So whoever was, you know, whoever's on the distillery, I apologize, but it had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Wono. What happened uh, with logical decision this week? Uh, we lost the tough two-one against our friends at Soak Every Lane SpongeBob lettering. There you go. Uh, B Med Key and the boys just they came out and were the better team that night. Uh, we yeah. managed to take a team or take a map off of them, but. Really didn't showcase, in my opinion, I'm sure in Ziltoid's opinion, uh, the full strength of logical decision, but you know what? That's how she goes. We can play better and we'll get them back in the playoffs. But yeah, exactly. they, they played well and we didn't. So that's just how it tends to go. Hopefully yeah. this week we'll show off a little bit better. OBC is a bit of a challenge. So, um, you know, well, they, have, they haven't yeah, been having win a good map. run, though. Like they also got beat by uh, um, 10 Armor, which is a yeah. strong team, by the way. So. Uh, I'm it not all like that surprised. The division is the division to watch. There's a yeah, lot. Yeah, like B West. The there's so many. Yeah, everyone's that didn't super go anyway. close. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ziltoid, did you play in both games or all three games? I guess we don't have subs. So oh, yeah. Oh really? <laughs> so yeah, we run the same five every game. Yep. Yeah. Just letting out the strategy. Oh, same five every game. Uh, Nexus cats do have subs. I'm one of them. I was on the bench. So, uh, Say that. how does that pom- feel? Pom poms in hand. How does that feel? Pom poms in hand, guy, right? We yeah. actually were talking about buying uh, pom poms for me, uh, either NGS orange or rainbow color for obvious reasons. Um, and it was just a, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a tough match. It was actually our first loss. So, um, we, uh, we got two one. So we did make sure they only get two points instead of three and that actually keeps us tied for first but i think they beat us in the tiebreaker i think I and i watched that game and i really do feel like you guys let your macro go and that was the only yeah. reason that frank's furters you took too many fights with them and that was their advantage over you you oh, guys yeah. had played more macro like a lot you know avoided a lot more fights you'd have been fine i think well I, I'll, I'll say you know we uh, we were hitting the showers afterwards, and it we had a real heart to heart as far as discussion goes. Uh, as far as uh, you know, what do we need to do to improve? Uh, we spent a lot of time this week um, gearing up for our next opponents, just because of that loss. So I think that's the, the positive plan. effects of losses, right? Right, exactly. And that I mean that every uh, you learn more from a loss than you do from a win. Um, so we're gonna you know go back to the films, kind of take a look at what happens. You said you, we let macro get away, so we're gonna put more emphasis on macro and uh there we go so uh that's what happened with the nexus cats so anything else happened cool this week any so, any good casts b train i just heard yeah. a plug from turd saying i was on the bench we lost now to me that sounds like a really subliminal message <laughs> that you're saying you don't want to be on the bench <laughs> i heard it i hear you roaring yeah. producer <laughs> arthanel are you listening yeah uh, <laughs> He is indeed listening. Uh, but <laughs> no, uh, real talk though, our support is like, she's really good. And I am not better than her. And uh, I gladly sit on the bench to watch her play. She is Stukov OP God. She's great. So if you've ever watched her play support, she's really good. So that's all I'll say on that topic. That's a good way to be. I like that. Really wholesome. Yeah. Exactly. I'm a wholesome guy. <laughs> Keeping the show all wholesome. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to the next topic. Let's uh let's talk about some trending teams, guys. Um, uh, you know, we talked about logical decision, we talked about B Train's team, we talked about Nexus Cats. What's going on around the league? Ziltoid, start us out with some heroic. Heroic division. Woo! Yeah. Um, so the big match, like I pointed out last week, 
was Abusement Park versus Revive Esports. Yeah. And Abusement Park took the victory. It was 2-1. It was a very close matchup. Definitely, like, if you watched it, it was very back and forth. It was pretty hard to pinpoint who has actually come out on top of that series. But uh, Abusement Park pulled it out. And I think that that, uh, that was a pretty big statement because oh, yeah. re- taking out Revive basically puts them in the running for top two spots. Um, Abusement Park now hasn't actually lost a series. Um, and they'll be going with that kind of advantage into celeb gaming whenever the, that set up, or whatever that matchup's going to happen. Yeah. But next week isn't going to be super busy. I think we only have one scheduled match so far, which yeah. is, of course, going to be Montreal style bagels versus celeb gaming. Um, and uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, MSB has kind of had a bit of a rough one because it's a tough division. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, I expect probably uh, yet another two from the side of Slum Gaming. Um, really, at this point, um, only Revive Esports and Abusement Park, I think, have any chance of taking Slum down. Um, and that matchup's not not yet scheduled yet. So so we'll yeah. have to see how that goes. Well, and I'm just looking at the standings right now, and it's 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 really close at the top there. Um, only three points separate Revive from Abusement Park, and only five points separate celeb gaming from revive so anyone's anyone's division that's obviously you know top division here in ngs so it's it's fun to watch a lot of fun to watch um so we'll we'll have to keep on doing that uh you also have division a right yes i do all right what's going on division a trending um what we saw from last week was luxorian sun who was actually my pick to be at the top of this division clearly i was wrong (laughs) <laughs> um, but they did actually um, beat out line speed, um, which was uh, good. Like they haven't, um, and it was a domination. So yeah. they finally got on the scoreboard. They took out a team that's been doing decently well against some of the, the, the top teams or the expected top teams in this division. So that's a pretty big, uh, you know, big victory for them. And, and hopefully that that's the, the kick in the pants they need to, make my prediction come true so i don't look like a complete <laughs> moron um which of course is very hard to do i know my wife's laughing in the kitchen um but uh pfm is also undefeated and that looks like it'll continue to happen uh as their next matchup was nightwood which is one of the lower uh you know kind of at the bottom team right now in division a yeah. um and no bone thick mama white mane uh did go into one one, but Nobo picks up the win because Thick forfeited, unfortunately, Ooh, because they yeah. ran out of time. They had so one that's... of their players disconnect between games two and three and couldn't find a. It was a late night game. I remember being in NGS as they were trying to find a, a replacement. Yeah, it was like that was a tough three. loss for them because they <clears> they, <throat> they took it to Nobo in the first game really hard, and then yeah. in the second game Nobo was able to get kind of a draft that they they're comfortable with. And really kind of push back, but like that that game three was all we wanted to see, and unfortunately yeah. <laughs> didn't happen. It was so sad. Stolen from Poor us. Fitzy, hate to see it, but just like that, like right when you're it getting happens. at least they got one point, which is good for them. But yeah. you know, again, that's just gotta feel terrible because you're just going to that last game ready to kind of, you know, finish it out and you just can't do it because somebody gets dis- disconnected. It's just well, hopefully terrible. you get to see that matchup back in the playoffs. So yeah. <laughs> And then games to watch for next week. PFM versus Novo obviously is the big one, as yeah. Novo still is undefeated, um, and PFM is as well. While Novo still has dropped games, um, I don't think PFM yeah. has. So it, it'll be interesting to see how this how this kind of turns out. Um, definitely, you know, we obviously don't want to showcase Novo again for another week, but you know, that's not a bad Thursday night showdown kind of idea there with those two teams. Um, exactly. Ferris Ferris versus Queen Concerts could also be a pretty good matchup to watch out for as well. There you go. And I know uh, that Lion Speed actually played the triple support that we pointed out on the show last week. They did uh, Tyrael, Vala, Oriel, Tass, and Uther, but uh, they just didn't didn't uh, cut it out there. They only got about seventy eight thousand uh, damage, um, and they actually took a loss in that game. So I would hypothesize a big reason for that is the. When you're running a triple support kind of composition, my yeah. my personal opinion is you need CC um, to keep Bala alive. It's not just like you don't just right. need abilities to heal her. You need 
crowd control and space control. She has to be able to step up freely and without multiple forms of good, like reliable crowd CC. control, yeah. you're really not going to be able to do that. And I think that can get exploited by better teams for sure. B train. Did you watch any matches from uh, heroic and Div- uh, Div-A? Uh Not really. I caught a couple from like the past couple of weeks and just to like, yeah, yeah. Top off, uh, you said you were talking about PFM, and I remember one of the plays from last week was they hit like this crazy VP combo. And when I watched them play, they they did look phenomenal. Like if there's a yeah. team that I 100% would be like, I think they're just gonna pretty much run through until playoffs. And then if even if they step it up from there, that would be fantastic. I think PFM looks pretty good up there. That was on last week's highlight. It was versus Luxorian mm-hmm. side. Yeah, yeah, actually yeah. highlighted that as like the number two highlight was the VP mm-hmm. ring into. Um, Lightning, Lightning breath, breath. Yep. and on Wolf Sky, yeah. it was fantastic. I was a four a four man wipe, four man VP, yeah, and ring. Yep. I think. All right, whoa, no, uh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, whoa, no, what's going on in uh, Division B? Uh, starting us off with Beast Division B East. Uh, yeah. We got <laughs> two like teams it. kind of battling it out for the top right now. Uh, Minion Miners taking the number one spot with just a slight one point lead over Gilly Shark, who yeah. has played one less game, so there's still a chance for Gilly Shark to kind of overcome them there. But Gilly Shark notably has not dropped a single map yet in this right. season. And they're actually playing this week, right? They are playing. Uh, no. No, no. No? No. They've got uh, a couple different matches going on. I don't think they play each other till. Unless it was one of their flex games. I haven't actually checked that. Could be. I thought I uh, got that wrong. That's okay. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Gilly Shark can keep up their undefeated streak. Uh, Minion right. Miner's also looking pretty hot, going up against Hodus this week, who's can been kind of struggling and a couple wins, couple losses, little looking a little mid tier right now. Yeah. Uh, moving her over to B West, uh, mm-hmm. another undefeated team, Virtual Murky Slayers, six and zero in maps right now. Uh, after that, things get pretty uh, murky again. I'll say this. <laughs> <laughs> Same pun twice in a row. Uh, with ourselves a logical decision and arrogant Nephilim tied for second place with points, and then soak every lane and temp armor right behind us at six points. So uh, very close division. Uh, still a lot of, as we near kind of the halfway mark of the season, interesting to see how things are shaking up. Oh, yeah. Uh, games it's another watch. close one, too. It's <clears throat> super close how this is, is turning out. Uh, games to watch this week, I would put it at uh, Arrogant Nephilim against 10 Armor. 10 Armor okay. is currently 4-0, and oh, so they still have a couple games to play to get caught up. Arrogant Nephilim, 5-4, and four, a little bit more of a, a 500 record, but a strong team and should be a good match to watch. There you go. Uh, B-Train, why don't you bring us down with Division C? Div C, my humble home. So uh, <laughs> starting off with Div C East. Uh, at the top of the standings with 11 points is almost legends and they're one of my big surprises this season i remember i casted i think when i was just trying to get all my stuff set up i casted one of their scrims against one of the other new teams and they had a rough go like in their first game but and then their second game was kind of rough as well but i think they ended up winning the the, the best of three yeah. um but they the one thing i can say about them and i believe that's the team that born to shine is on and uh yes mm-hmm. they do a fantastic job adapting and learning like every time i've watched them they just look leaps and bounds better than the last time i saw them and then from game to game they make those same improvements which is one of those big things as a team being able to adapt and move forward so they're sitting at the top and for good reason um and then the top of Div C east is pretty tight it's between you know calculated throw was undefeated until their last match uh they lost a three game series and kind of a heartbreaker zuljin distillery is another team sitting at the top and then in fourth place but undefeated is the found vikings and we played the, the Zuljin Distillery Tournament, and the Vikings were, they came in at the very end, and then they were just kind of asking everybody to scrim. They were all new people. I'd never seen them before. Yeah. And I think they're the team to beat in Sea East because they just have so many people who have so many power pick heroes that they're comfortable on. You can't ban, they're going to get what they want minus one piece, maybe. You have to ban an entire player's arsenal if you want to get rid of a comfort pick. So yeah. I think banning against them is going to be extremely difficult for anybody who plays them. And they they team fight phenomenally. They have good comms, and their oh, yeah. macro isn't lacking. So it's not one of those teams that you can just run the circles around. So I think until somebody can take them down in a series, I still have them as kind of the alpha dogs in the East. Yeah. Um, they've, they're undefeated. They're only fourth because they've played less matches than everybody else. They've only played three sets so far. Uh, and then going over to Div C East, 
or west, excuse me. Well, real quick on, uh, on, on yeah, Div C right. East, like we were talking about how close it is. This, in order to get to someone that isn't within four points of top place, you have to go to eighth place, which is just insane. Um, yeah. I mean, that's a crazy division too. So, NGS is crazy hot this week. Um, yeah. Again, stuff. I'll say it again. Like the, you know, they did a really good job on on placing this season. I think, like, I absolutely, think they nailed uh, it in almost every division. I think it shows, uh, and I know they put in a lot of work behind the scenes and on the off season. Whatever so. they did to to work everything out, they did a really good job of it, for sure. Uh, sorry to cut you off, so let's move back on to Div C West. So Div C West, I don't know as much about. I know we've scrimmed against uh, CCS, the top team in the division, right. uh, and they absolutely bullied us in our scrims. It was upsetting. We were trying some new things, and they they really punished us for it. So they're just a strong team in general. And then Dive Hard is in second place, and I've casted two of their games, <laughs> and it's it's resulted in one series where the enemy team doesn't ban Phoenix against Tin. And 10 hard carries every game. It. Yeah, and 10 hard carries every game like a madman. And then <laughs> we saw in the next series, Phoenix was banned both games, and they had kind of a hard time playing around that. So I feel hmm. like, you know, obviously I'm not trying to scout for anybody, but <laughs> if you're on dive hard and any of you see this, maybe just be prepared for that Phoenix to not be there. Because We were, we were harping like the whole yeah, cast talking about whole time. how like 10 should not get on this hero. <laughs> so clearly people learned from from that <laughs> and then when i know I think, um talking oh, about sorry, can't counterpick stupid real quick i know he was in ngs Disco- uh, discord calling out teams just like we are gonna scr- i didn't he, he he asked to scrim logical decision right uh who that uh rtb <laughs> i think it was was just posting yeah. looking for scrims channel just like calling out teams i think he called out regen red or mongoose's team and just is like let's play next monday be there be square <laughs> Um, so shout out to those guys, you know, do what you gotta do. <laughs> but I think if I have to look at my wild card for Div C, uh, West, yeah. it's the ginormous Jaegers. Oh, yeah. uh, they have a couple of really spicy picks that I really enjoy. One of which is a Medivh. <laughs> and I, we've, we've scrimmed against it. And it was funny because we were also testing out Medivh in that time frame. So we were, neither of us were banning it because we were both trying to pick it. Yeah. Um, but they play well around it. They look really good in the games I saw with it. Um, well, they were and, showcased this week on the Thursday yes, night yeah. showdown. Exactly. And so we, and you know, I, I, you know, I did the interview with with Ogle, and one of the things he really kind of pointed out was that they're still a relatively kind of like new team. They haven't been playing together very long. So yeah, I think the thing about ginormous Jaegers is that like the early season should look pretty rough for them while they kind of get their stuff together. But there's a lot of talent on the team, so like they will probably be very scary come playoff times as long as they manage to yeah. make it in. I don't care what position they're in. Um, I'm just kind of confirming what B-Train's talking about. They're definitely a team to watch out for as the as it gets later into the season because the more they play together, the, the scarier that team's going to get. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Anything else out of uh, Division C, or is it my turn on Division D? Uh, I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to point out, yeah. All right. Sounds good to me, my friend. All right, then. Let's move on to Division D. That's for me. Uh, Division D East. Uh, everyone's pretty close. Um, Frank's Furter's number one now because they beat out the Nexus Cats like we were talking about. Nexus Cats number two. And then uh, Luciology is actually number three. Um, and they're just like a really tough team. Um, we haven't been scouting them a whole lot just yet, but... I've caught a couple of their videos. They're a tough team, and they they seem to be the kind of team that punches a little bit above their weight class. So definitely another team to watch out for in that division. Um, Save the Murloc are actually uh, towards the bottom, which I think is a little bit surprising for everyone here. Uh, I know I, I think I predicted they were going to win this division slash the Nexus Cats, of course. But um, uh, I think Ziltoid, you said Save the Murloc. I think Woe had Save the Murloc too for the prediction. No, he had somebody else. I'm pretty sure. No, I can't, he might I can't been... remember three weeks back. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh no, I gave it to. I said too calculated to throw. That's who I said. There you go. Um, so very interesting division there. Um, and then moving on over to Division D West, Pigeon Stitches, Clouded Minds at the top. Um, I know Pigeon Stitches. Uh, we've scrimmed against them. They're a tough team, and they have 
really good macro. They've been playing together for a while. I think they played in Heroes Lounge, so they're just uh, in my mind they're a team to watch out. And I think they're three. Uh, they have three dominations. So um, at this point, that's still pretty good. We have OC Peach Boys, uh, of course, the Nexus Turds. They're down there too, uh, but they uh, they actually had a real tough loss too this week. Um, but they they went back to the drawing board. They started talking about some stuff, uh, and hopefully hopefully everything works out for them. Um, but uh, definitely an interesting division. Div D. It seems like Division D. We see a little bit more uh, people on top, people on the bottom. And then some people in the middle, as far as uh, like a little bit more varied kind of range. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Be trained, just demonstrating it out. So yeah, I got you. Uh, I think I mean, a defining characteristic of D division is is kind of which teams learn to play as teams. Like that, right. that's going to be kind of the big dividing factor. And that's the thing when you're new or you're kind of on the low side, you're not very experienced in the competitive scene. Getting that. Um, understanding how to put any type of team synergy together is probably one of the biggest problems and, you know, getting the schedule right, getting the scrims right or whatever the case is. So you're going to see a disparity with ones that play together and ones that don't yet. Right. And, and, you know, I know the, my former team and the Nexus cats, the way we fixed that was just scrim, 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 just do, you know, you can go into Team League, but it's just not the same. It's um, the funnest way to play the game, anyways. So, yeah. like, there's no reason not to do it. Exactly. So, um, if anyone from Division D is listening, do some scrims. Uh, Nexus Cats are always open. So, um, or Nexus Turds will probably be open for some scrims too. So, let Unless us know. Unless you're Nobo Esports and then just apparently just play Arams. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Maximum playtime. Mix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess. And you get comfort picks all over. Though, to be uh, fair, that team's stacked full of people that have been in the competitive scene for literally ever. Yeah. Like, I played with some of these guys in, like, chair league. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. They've been around for a long time. So, What about uh, any uh, interesting trends out of uh, Heroes? You mean, okay, yeah, out of the Heroes specifically. Yeah. Um, gotcha. I, I wasn't sure if we wanted to talk about players or not. But, um... So go well, on. yeah. Is there any uh, trending players? Anyone do you want to highlight besides? Yeah, B Train clearly yeah. <laughs> the one that I was I was itching to get to. Yeah, um, I would say for like uh, heroic division, we're looking at like um, Cubico has had a really good start to the season. Yeah, um, in the off lane, uh, you know, evasion is obviously like one, but I'm trying to avoid talking about celeb gaming because they're clearly undefeated at the top of the standing. So it's yeah. kind of unfair to like. Well, CTV Met and CTV Satet and all these guys are top. But surprisingly, if you actually look at some of the statistics on there, they're actually not at the top. But I also think that that's because Stats of the Storm hasn't been fully updated yet. So, oh yeah. Uh, but anyways, Cubico's had a really good season start to the season. He's killing it in the off lane with some of the highest uh, experience per minute, experience gain, and siege, siege damage. So he's really handling the macro side of things for his team very well. Tempest and Rossi have been doing a really good job in the healer spot as well with very high APM, um, healing total numbers, and KD. So they're not dying a lot, and they're making sure that they're getting all that stuff out. Uh, Wally Snit and Mr. Christie um, have been setting up plays and soaking damage for their teams very, very well. And, um, you know, in the tank role. And Roger is the top in KDA, high skills and takedowns outside of CT Vimat. Um, so Roger is definitely a guy to keep an eye out for in the DPS spot in the heroic division. Oh yeah. Um, on in, uh, a division Rexpa from, uh, give me the D shield is <laughs> continuing to put up <laughs> lots of damage, averaging close to 65,000 in hero damage, um, in three games this week on the season. He's averaging about 62 K. Um, Bernie Byrne from Nobo, uh, which I would point out is definitely probably one of the best support players in A Division. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Sure. Um, he's he's basically flexed on that team the whole time they've been playing. So I know Richard Gear was a big uh, uh, healer support main, but Bernie Byrne's really making a name for himself this season. Seventy nine k healing average through seven games. That's just, just nuts. Um, with an HPM of four point two k per minute, which is just also nuts. 
Um, Richard Gear uh, is currently sitting at 35 kills, top of Div A. Um, so he's definitely trying to stack those numbers up on the uh, uh, kills and takedowns. <laughs> yeah. He's doing a pretty good job of it. There you go. Whoa, no. What you got for us out of Division B? Anyone? Uh... I don't got anything quite as detailed as what Ziltoy just went through, but yeah, uh, I'm just feeling a little inadequate. Was, <laughs> but well, half uh, my work was done for me, thank you, Key. Appreciate. I was gonna say it. I yeah, can take a look at uh, what Chaotic Order posted in the Div B chat, highlighting some of the the players and the teams from the week. Uh, as far as individual stats, it looks like uh, B East is really flexing on B West here, with every single individual stat pretty much going towards a B East player. Uh, Galaxy from Jailbait is currently rocking the highest KDA and Div B at 44. So 44 kills per death is pretty crazy. That's insane. Um, it's yeah. I'd, I wonder to see how many games it's played though. I should definitely yeah. be taken into account because I don't know it, if you he know, did any sort of uh, yeah filtering yeah. by games played or minimum games needed. Right. Um, <clears throat> A fish from Duratan's couch, uh, highest damage per minute at uh, 3.6k. Uh, New Flash from Minion Myers, highest healing per minute, HPM at 4.1k, very high healing per minute. And Stark for Gilly Shark, who is not a tank player, which is good to mention, has taken the most damage per death. So, <laughs> non-tank player really tanking it out there, 139k per death. He just apparently oh, doesn't like to die too much. Well, and shout out to that guy's healers, too. Yeah, yeah no shit. Gilly Shark healer, uh, that's Chemo Tripson, I think, really... Really, also, if he's double taking duty. heroes like that are meant to soak a lot of damage, like Dahaka, um, anybody that's like really good at Dahaka can really stack up those damage taken numbers because he can just heal himself four, four or five times. So. Right. And Stark's there. Um, what's his face? Samuro player. I'm pretty sure. So I don't know. I don't. You shouldn't be taking too much damage on Samuro. I don't think. But yeah. I guess if he's, ne- <laughs> if he's never dying, that leads to. Do they count his clones? Like I have no idea about that. That's actually, I have no idea how damage taken, since that's, that's not a stat that appears in like right? the, the regular game. <laughs> in the normal one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting to think about. Be Anyways, trained besides your skills. Who, yep. Did you have more to say, Will? No, Sorry. no, no, no. Go ahead. Be trained besides yourself. Who who should we be watching in your division? <laughs> oh, there's other people in my division? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I think, honestly, I'm, I'm going to keep ringing the bell on uh, another Div C East team. Um, the found Vikings. Yeah. And I'm going to go with contender and I want to highlight a very special moment that I had recently with contender. Uh, we're on a game. I'm casting it. He's playing Alarak and he's so confident that he picks a different level 16 than the lightning. Oh, oh man. I was watching that game <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was an accident. It was 100% not meant to be picked. So I gave him a lot of crap for it. We're pretty good buddies, but like realistically, I think, uh, He's super mechanically skilled. He's got a crazy hero pool. Um, and what he's comfortable on are all kinds of heroes. Like, you know, not specifically like for me, I'm a, I'm a ranged player. Like if you put yeah. me on a melee hero, I don't really know like the best ways to get around it, but he plays everything. Oh, and yeah. He does a phenomenal job. So I think as far as like assassin play goes, he's one of the ones to watch out for. And then, you know, throwing another shout out to another Div C East team, uh, calculated throw. We saw a game and I have to lay this out so that we understand. Their support was playing solo lane. Their solo laner was playing mage, and their mage player was playing support. Okay? What? I don't know what happens in their drafts. Like We're not here to there. discuss that, but I was really <laughs> confused. But they've they've made some shifts lately, and they have a really deep roster. They have a lot of subs, and they play a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so they've displaced a, you know, their previous support player, which is Grievant, to the solo lane, where we saw the Benny Hill clip last week of Rexar. That was him. Um, but he's he's honestly done a fantastic job catching up to speed for the solo lane. Yeah, uh, I've watched their games. He soaks well. He doesn't get ganked a lot. Like obviously, there's a few that you can't just escape from. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, but he he does a good job up there, and he soaks well for his team. And every time he is in the solo lane, they look very good as an entire team. They don't fall behind. They have good control of the map. So you know, huge props being able to shift out of a role that you've accustomed to back into you know maybe even not even uh, an old role but just a different one in general even mid-season so that's really really incredible for someone to do there you go uh rounding it out quickly 
Tins Phoenix. That? I'm sorry. I have to say Tins Phoenix. We have <laughs> I was to mention waiting it. for you to say that. Tins like, Phoenix. Tins Phoenix. Doesn't say it, I'm going to say it. Tins sure. Phoenix. Warp Warfare. Dive in. Auto armor build. Crazy build. You, just, Whoa. you dive behind keeps. Yeah, he takes Warp Warfare and Adamantium Shell at 13 for the 50% armor. He, he's like Lee Ming just blinking around. He's just like, I'm over here. Bloop. He's over here. He kills three people. He blinks over here. He kills four people. He blinks behind the keep. Kills the core before the keeps go down. Like, it's crazy. The dude's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. All right, uh, rounding it out, Division D. Uh, shout out to uh, Blackened Avian on Pigeon Stitches. Uh, I, he's their captain. He's just uh, doing some good stuff over there. Uh, the reason I'm not making specific stats is because I forgot to update my stats of the storm prior to the show. So it's only having last week's stats. Or stats. Uh, but as of last week, we had Ghost 444 having the most uh, hero damage. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that last week, so not repeating it i guess um what else we got uh yeah we forgot to do player highlights last week so well that, might, that might be why well it. then fine i'll it's talk about last week's uh since i have it pulled up uh <laughs> we had the most kills as of, so this is as of week three about march 8th um we had blaze it with 7.33 kills that's an average i'm assuming no it, that's a murky kill right is 0.33 a murky kill, or is it? That... Yeah, that sounds about right. Murky doesn't count. Uh, it's weird, murky's deaths. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, know if it counts it like that. I just I'm... agree. I think it's the average. It could be an average. Um, Arthenau actually also had seven, so um, he's pulling that up. Uh, shout out to Stixa. Uh, I believe that's on Sack of Bricks. 26 B-Steps. Most sprays, that guy, also on the Nexus Cats, with 24. So uh, Division D, just really uh, picking it up. I haven't haven't compared these numbers to B-Train's number of uh, B-Steps and sprays. Uh, I can only assume that these just pale in comparison. <laughs> amateur numbers. <laughs> yeah, amateur numbers compared to that. Were you the number one B-Stepper last season, B-Train? I only played like half of last season, but I'd still probably say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to dispute it. It's probably right. <laughs> I'm toxic. Uh, what can I say? Yeah. Well, if you're doing it for fun, it's it's B steps of love. It's not for fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Edit that out. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> moving on to our next topic, guys. Uh, actually, this is going to be. Do we want to cover heroes still? Sorry, just to interrupt. Mm, my ev's always that? banned my ev's always banned good that's a good one uh we could quickly talk about it yeah, i think maybe touch only, on it let's quick. just do a general overview instead of each division right and i and i do have those numbers i think the only thing that's different this week than last week like that's like markedly is the popularity of diablo um he's at a 77.4 percent i don't think he was that high of a percentage last week he was always popular, but uh, I think he was eclipsed by Johanna last week. Yeah, he that's was, what I thought, he was too. was sitting around, like, number five for hero popularity, so he's definitely seen a bit of a creep up in... Uh, maybe he's just getting banned less and played more, or I'm not sure what it is exactly. And Stukov's 74 games now. Like, he's yeah. just straight being, like... It was, like, 1-2 <laughs> really close, like, before with Tarand and Stukov. Now it's, like, it's a pretty big gap between who oh, gets yeah. played now by about... 12 games although noticeably the win rate has kind of done the reverse where stukov's win rate has kind of plummeted a bit it's still good at 56 percent, but it's gone down since more people are playing him whereas teron's getting less games in but her win rate shot up to 66.7 which is oh yeah showcasing she's still obviously a very strong support hero and she's just a technical support b train was actually casting last week's nexus cats game uh and there's a clip i think somewhere of B train just saying, "Oh my God, Tarandi," and it was just like that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it a uh, Lulu? Lulu, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is Lu- I specifically remember it was a Boe game. I was yep. absolutely appalled. My jaw was on the floor. Yep. And uh, so y- you get those technical support, assassin support, whatever she- Tarandi is, and uh, just get get some good stuff happening. So Imperius has been incredibly popular for the off lane. Um, oh yeah, sixty-seven games. He's still at a kind of lower percent win rate, though, at forty-four point eight percent. I think that's just telling of the fact that Imperius, like, there is a skill gap. There is a difference between yeah. people that play him well and that don't. 
um, or draft him well. So like there, there's still some arguments on whether he fits certain compositions because of his, you know, inability to quick wave clear, like versus the other top um, off laner right now, which is Leoric, who has a 53.8% win rate. So it's about 10% higher in win rate. Um, he's picked less often, but he definitely has a, a you know, but not by a whole lot. I was actually going to ask, because I don't think we talked about this last week, and if we did, stop me, but what, what are like the top five offlane heroes right now? Imperius is actually one of the most banned um, for offlane, okay. as well as picked. So like when it actually comes down to how many games he's actually played, um, yeah. it, it's not quite as high as, say, like Leoric, who's been banned out nine times in 52 games. So like he plays a lot more frequently. So those are the top two. Yep. Arthas is coming up in third, which is kind of an interesting kind of pickup of all the offlaners that are available right now. Arthas is one of the highest played, and he's got a decent win rate at 57.1%, yeah. um, which is pretty good. So, I mean, I think he just has a good matchup into a lot of the current ones, and the big big like winning matchup that we'd want to highlight goes back to that Imperius. Yeah. A lot of people have been playing Arthas against Imperius, and it's actually been working out pretty well. He the lanes well into him. Um, they have similar kind of wave clear, but I think Arthas has a slight advantage in that area. Mm-hmm. And uh, when it comes down to like team fight effect, they have very similar kind of like impact. But it just seems to me that with the win rate and stuff like that, Arthas is clearly kind of coming out the victor in that. <clears throat> and then the next two are Blade, or you know, you could throw Phoenix in there if we're going to talk about like uh, DPS offlaners, but. We're just going to talk about Warrior ones. Blaze and then DeHawker are the next uh, most picked, but both have sub-50% win rate. So I think Hmm. they've kind of fallen off of the power. I think they're a little harder to play properly, Yeah. um, and that's kind of showing in their win rate, despite the fact that they're being picked more frequently um, in the offlane position. I'm just curious, what's the Rexar win rate sitting at since his buff? I'm asking for a friend. (laughs) <laughs> no problem. I Am I your friend? Pull down here to find him because he's I mean, do you not... like Rexar? <laughs> oh, I love Rexar. Awesome. Okay, so you're my Rexy friend. Is my boy. So <laughs> in eleven games he's been played, he's at fifty four point five percent. He's been banned four times as well. So. Positive win rate. I know exactly. Um, who's he does have a positive too. win rate. Yeah. I think Rexar is one of those things that will never really be at the top of our statistics as far as like his popularity. Like he's still going to be very niche. He's going to be one of those certain people play him um that might increase over time because he did get a buff but i I don't i don't expect to see a lot of xr right all righty now can i move on zeltoid is it okay yes (laughs) all right (laughs) let's bm yeah (laughs) i gotta keep it on the path man that's why i'm no no you're good you uh, talking about heroes was very nice all right uh before we move on to our next uh, topic though i do want to point out the community member of the week uh, I think he's also a caster of the week. It's Mystic. Uh, calculated throw. B-Train mentioned him a little bit ago. This guy has been killing it uh, in NGS. Um, he's casting games left and right. Yeah, slow clap, golf clap. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> something like um, 50% of all games cast last week were cast by this guy. That's crazy. I'm pulling, I'm pulling percentages out of thin air, so it's probably wrong. But uh, he is he is doing a ton of casting. His casts are great. A lot of fun to watch. Um, have you yeah, guys caught any? Yeah, there you go. Not much else to say. Uh, he cast a uh, logical decision, so kind of by default we caught that cast. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I watched any of the rest this week, but I have caught some of his casts in the past this NGS season. He does a really good job. Yeah, and the reason I said he was community member of the week is because this guy he's out of calculated throw. He's made a sister team he makes lots of friends in the league i'm good friends with him and i don't i'm not even playing calculated throw um so shout out to that guy two thumbs up <laughs> all right now what we've all been waiting for it is time for the top five highlights of the week that's why we're here all right let's uh let's start it out at number five sergeant hammer's great escape Show the clip. Sergeant Hammer is really out of position. She's got to know she needs to back up right now. This whole rotation is coming in. All right, so she's starting to back off. I don't know if she's going to make it out of this. She might. She's got three more coming down. 
Making a double then, back. Playing the jukes. <laughs> what did she go for her, um... She went seven? siege mode. Hover. So she did go hover siege? Yeah. That'll so just keep her in, keep her at always and in range. And she makes with, um, it out enemies. with the stealth! Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> that is beautiful. That was amazing jukes by the hammer. He doesn't even know she's there! All right, and the <laughs> so the hammer gets away. B train. What, what are you thinking about that one? Ambush level one, best talent. Uh, shout out to Mystic for not taking that last time you played Sergeant Hammer. Uh, <laughs> it is my job to throw shade. That's why you take that talent, good sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was absolutely fantastic. Recognizing being able to siege up and get full invisible, and then Varian just kind of running by with his two swords and smacking minions, of course, like he always does. That was. I loved it. it. It was almost as good as Benny Hill last week. Yeah, it almost could have also been cued to the same music. It was it was clever. Just well, we thought about it for sure. Out of vision, and then it. and then <laughs> you didn't see him, and everyone's just roaming around, and he's just hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, moving on to clip number four. This one's called Orphea Does Damage. Show the clip. Oh, minion wave here. They're still pushing in. Diablo front side finds a stun onto Stukov, and Stukov now stuck in a horrible spot and destroyed. DeWitt could be next, but Ironskin keeping him alive for now. Falling on the other side, it's Diablo and Greymane. Blue Steen, he's going to fall too, and look at that. They get a fourth to add to it. A quad kill for Zoljin Distillery. And it goes on, and on, and on, and on. <laughs> that was a long <laughs> ultimate there. Yeah, that might have been the longest Orphea ultimate I've ever seen. That's just the the Johanna punish and the Arthas did so much work to keep everyone in. And then also the Naz and the Ana did a really good job of keeping it going themselves, trading places, walking in and out. It was, <laughs> you hate to see it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> or love to see it. I mean, because now I get to watch it. It's great. <laughs> True. The only thing I've seen stand in Orpheus ult longer than that is the empty trig love on Volskaya when she first came out and people would drop it there because it would keep procking and nobody could get in it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's been a while <laughs> since that. All right, uh, moving on to number three. This is a nub Jabate. And the Burrow charge from Ronnie Taker, trying to get him out of there, but a massive Lornado. Oh, but look at the, look at the horrify on the other side. Cactus Ham saving Ronnie Taker and killing the Johanna in the process. MVP Cactus Ham. Put that, ladies and gentlemen, into your top five plays of the week. So Nub just uh, gets everyone to use their spells on him. Clicking them buttons. Clicking the buttons on a nub. Even eats always. the Lornado and still doesn't die. Yeah. <laughs> I always love seeing a, uh, a fantastic Horrify. Oh, it's my a... highest played hero. And so whenever you see someone perfectly place it, because it fears outwards from the center, and you see Johanna just helplessly running at the gate because she's feared and all of her teammates go the other way, like, that was a pretty that was a pretty fantastic placement. Oh, definitely Cactus Ham hit a bomb three-man fear. Really turned that clip around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this clip could have gone the other way, and a nub would just have... <laughs> <Been obliterated. laughs> so alrighty moving on we have our number two this is a uh, five man Deckard Root show the clip level 10 yet so our last fight before heroics are here Genji trying to assault Falstead again as Ogle and is going to threaten them all the way back but we're about to have this re-engagement happen with this big swap by Artanis and Johanna is gone just oh! like no 40 hit points of health escaped with just a sliver of HP. Dark Knight survives. They don't get the kill. Five-man Decker Root saves the Joanna. 30 health, I think she had left. 30-something, yeah. That was, it was incredible. Uh, shout out to Odd Thought on that Decker Root. Uh, anything else? I think if you go, listen... Deckard Theory Craft here. I play uh, I play DPS Deckard Kane, so I take spell power at one. Yep. I take the reduced cooldown on one of your shapes at seven, and then I take Stone Curse at sixteen. You literally get a pentakill there if you get Stone Curse online. So next time you make that play, go spell power at one, 
when you hit that level 16 spike, just tell everybody on your team to fall back to the core, and you'll take care of everything else. <laughs> B train hearing that build just hurts me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just painful. But to be, but but like all match. If you guys watched it again, Thursday night showdown matchup, absolutely yep. fantastic. One to three games, just like the one previous, and hopefully that continues to be the theme going forward. He was hitting those roots and those types of like plays like all the way through the match. Oh yeah, uh, Odd Thought's a phenomenal Deckard player. Really check him out if you're trying to learn the hero. There you go. All right, and the top play of the week. This is going to be Throws of Doom. Show the clip. That is going to be the taunt out from August Sun, just to try and zone them for a little bit. Lornado already comes out as well. Did they go into the extra Lornados? I don't know. Ring of Frost comes out. The boss point is going to be available. They're trying to stay on this. The tongue drag's going to be there. They're on the boss. The mosh pit's there as well. They get the shots, and that is going to be the members of two calculated two throw going down, and the series is won by Luciodology. GG. Well played. All right, you pop the dragon for him. Getting ready to go. Get that boss, and... What happens, B-Train? Yeah, throw. Yeah, calculated. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, you know, you said it. The dragon was out to do the boss, but it, it wasn't there to contest the point. And we saw how that worked out for him, Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and shout out to Lucidology. You know, they see the... I mean, it would have been anyone's... Whoever gets that boss wins the game, right? Mm -hmm. And they see that correctly and they get in there uh five guys and um uh, they get the point they get the win so um and i Mosh think we were talking... into blind as a bat <laughs> yeah interesting combo but worked yeah well there's yeah, also I... all kinds of uh combos coming out I, I saw a ring of frost with uh the decker brood again i guess that's kind of stacking up but that was and Asmo has his little demonic minion all he dropped on that. Yeah. There's, there's a lot going on. on. There's a lot. Everyone <laughs> pressed R. Demonic yeah. invasion, such a meme. Well, that's so, that's how you get in the top two spots, is you just you, you get a good clip where everyone's pushing R at the same time, you know? <laughs> I think like the thing about that fight was is if you if you look at the like the two teams, is because I as someone who plays a lot of Jaina, and I've played it in the past, and I also play Tychus. Um yeah. When you look at those two heroes, like their boss clear isn't that great. Like Tychus does great PvP damage, but Minigun doesn't work on PvE, and then Jaina has to blow all her cooldowns on that boss to try to kill it. So when you pop Dragon Queen beforehand, and I mean Tychus was laser drill, so no Odin, so you didn't really have like AOE control. Right. Jaina's blowing all her cooldowns, so the, you know they put the ring down, but they had no damage to nuke through anybody. So they just kind of well, got. They also didn't have Tychus at the yeah. beginning of the fight. Like he that, could burn that like Tychus fine in that window, window if he was alive. Yeah. But he wasn't a lot. So. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, I missed that. I really would have liked to have seen the Garrosh. Uh, I don't know. Did he take the double throw at 20? Either way, throw the tank, throw the healer onto the point. That way, Jaina can drop her damage on them and on the boss at the same time. Mm -hmm. Take two more people out of the fight. Instead, you're just letting them have time to group back up and make a final push for this boss fight, which ends up winning them the game. Yep. Right, and... and you know, I would have liked to see the dragon alt come out a little bit later. Definitely. Probably right when they're getting ready to cap it, just do the whoosh, blow them out of the way, and you're good to go. Uh, it's cookie time, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, because she had to blow the alt to get the more damage because of the Jaina and the Tychus problem, um, you know, that just wasn't it wasn't there for when you really needed it. So, very uh, very nice clips, boys. All right, moving on. Let's uh, let's get into our game this week. It's going to be the uh, B train name game. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do that one more time. <laughs> the oh, B train name game. <laughs> 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 All right. So how this is going to work this week? Well, actually, let me take a step back. So if you've watched any of B train's cast, uh, he uh, has a certain je ne sais quoi about calling heroes by certain nicknames. Um, so uh, it, it, I don't think we can show them on this show, but if you're interested, go ahead and uh, go ahead and watch any of his casts, and you'll hear some interesting nicknames. Uh, so what we're going to do today is uh, we've actually collected a couple couple nicknames. I'm going to say the nickname, and B-Tran has to guess the hero. It's pretty easy. Oh, Are we given hints for any of these? I, well, we'll see how some of these are real easy, right? So I'll start with an easy one. Dibbles. 
Yeah, it's Diablo. Yeah, I think you call Easy him that in your cast. Clap. Yeah, I call him yeah. Dibbles. It's Dibbles. He's not the only one that does that. No, Dibbles is no, the big no. one. I think I call him Dibbles. Yeah, that's been around for literally forever. See, like, so that one's really easy. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a, a big, or a, a little bit more difficult. It's got a big heckin' bug. I think uh, you might have called him this, too. I'm inclined to say a Nubarak. Yes, yeah, that is correct. Mm-hmm. See? Very well. Two for two. I call, I call him the Beetle. The Beetle? <laughs> the Beetle. I, I, I have a special spot in my heart for the Beetle build. Every time. Love it. I do too. 100%. Oh. I want to see it come back. <laughs> Give me Locust Swarm, please. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, this is, uh, the nickname is the old squid cannon. Stukov. Yeah. Yeah. That one's easy. Yeah. I like that one. I, I had to think about a spine launcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the, uh, I think the this is pirate skin. For this particular hero. Beep, beep, boom. Beep, Probably beep, is? boom. I've, the game is for B train Ziltoid. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, it is it is Probius. I, I was gonna say it has to be like Gazzle or Probius. I would have probably guessed Gazzle first, but Gazzle yeah. would have won where I would have gone with it too. There you go. This one's easy too. Um uh I'm gonna really try here. Turkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh here's another one. Uh Delhi guy? Oh, butcher! You would think, yeah, the... or stitches. It's got to be like chef stitches, maybe. I don't know. It's kale fast. I... Arthur, I oh, it's... salami. Yeah, salami. Okay, I call him salami. Assalamu alaikum. But say, <laughs> people make fun of his all because he goes, uh, as he goes, uh, like well, you salama ashalador. Salama ashalador. Yeah, that one. So I'm, just, you know, people say salami. So I'm just like, oh, salami assalik. So salami assalamu alaikum. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to say in the middle of a team fight. Because I'll be like, here's Asalaamu Alaikum. And he just YOLO's on in, drops fire. <laughs> there you go. I, I didn't get it. So I was like, oh. But, uh, all right, here's a here's a hard one. Um, Tyrandy. You said this was hard? I thought okay. you were just going to go with botched pronunciation by turd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? That's in the that's where I thought Taronda? Like, I, I, yeah, it's... it's how do you say it? Toronto? Tor- it's either Toronto or Torond. Like Tyrande. I've been, I've always called Tyrande. her Tor- It's Toronto. That's what I've always called her. Okay. Well, I call her Tyrandy. So Toronto, my love. It's Shut just love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nickname is Gary. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Is it Abathur? No, I can see why. I want to hear your reason for this, though. I'll be right back. Gary the snail from SpongeBob. Abathur's like snails around. He's like a snail with no shell. Get out I here. like this better than the real answer. The real <laughs> answer is garage. Oh, that's okay. That's too easy. Like right? you said, it yeah. was hard. So I'm like way overthinking. If you'd have just been like, <laughs> if you'd have gone dibbles, and then you would have said Gary, I'd have been like, oh, sir, throws a lot, but nah. Yeah. You, you, you went around. Yeah, you circumvented the whole equation. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we l- let's do our last one here. Uh, this is the uh, the nickname is the best hero in the game. Oh, t- Chen, the I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> and it's it's classic close. Mystery. It is close. Yeah, <laughs> think but... Chen, but thinner. Oh, skinny Chen, Illidan. Hey, <laughs> that's the right answer, actually. Yeah. Oh God, I hate Skinny it. Chen. Yeah, Chen. Chen is fat Illidan. For those of you who didn't know. Right. Okay, so let me think of some of my like PG names. Like, hmm. Okay, so we have Air Muradin. Who's Air Muradin? Falstead. Falstead. There you go. Falstead. Easy. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Sir Garrosha Sir throws a lot. Uh, Stukov. I usually go with the uh, the stiff arm because he gets the big shoves on people. He does the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, f- what was the other one? Oh, uh, lizard, dinosaur, the Is- haka. The haka. See, he's on so it. He I-, I had one of those on here. This was a uh, Yoshi. Was the one that uh, Arthur Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next topic. This is the matchup to watch, and we already kind of talked a little bit about this. Uh, Be trained. Is your matchup the matchup to watch? It in Div C East it is. There you go. Who, who are you playing this this upcoming week? Calculated throw. All right. B train versus Mystic. The Mage Showdown. 
There you go. And you uh, you were saying earlier, uh, it's the two casters of the week going up against each other. Fighting for our caster lives. Yeah. <laughs> I did make veteran caster before Mystic did. At the same time, but I'm saying before because my name's alphabetically Ed. Boom. Uh, works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get Still you up somewhere. Why don't you quickly recap the game, the matchups that we should be watching uh, from Heroic and Divay? Because I think you already talked about them. Yeah, uh, for Heroic Division, it's just going to be um, MSB versus Celeb Gaming. Okay. And then we have a really spicy matchup in Div A, which is Nobo versus PFM. Okay. That one should be really, really good. Definitely worth watching. Uh, whoa, no. Uh, recap us with the Division B games to watch this week. Yeah, uh, out of B West, we're looking at Arrogant Nephilim versus Ten Armor, two teams right up in the top in in division that anyone could take it. And moving over to B East, uh, the top teams kind of had I don't want to say easy, but maybe less competitive matches. So I actually went with uh, Reborn Knights Black against XL Esports. Okay. Or uh, SL Esports, I guess it is. Um, they're kind of both mid to low tier teams. Uh, Reborn Knights is a four and two record. Excel has a four and three record. So, kind of going to be a a good even fight to see who can kind of rise into the top tiers and who's going to kind of sink to the bottom of the the division. There. There we go. B Train, do you have a C West game to watch? So I think uh, I think my division C West game. There's not really any like crazy high standings teams playing. There's not like a, a one seed versus a two seed. But the Jaegers are playing I Cup. Because I'm not spelling it. Yeah. <laughs> C U P. The Jaegers yeah. are playing and that just like we talked about earlier, they're they're a really young team, but they are getting better every week. So I feel like they're probably the game to watch just so you can, you know, get a feel for how fun they can be and how well they play. There you go. Uh, and then we also have Rush B versus Paralute. Per- Perlute? Yep. I don't know how to say it. Well no, why uh, why should we watch that game? Uh I highlighted that game just as uh, Rush B, uh, B Train already kind of t- uh, touched on them. That's Tins, uh, yeah, Tins Phoenix there. So and we will, will not see the Phoenix. Paralute near the bottom t- of the division. No, but... no, 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 no. Our, Tins on, Tins on our Dive Hard. Sorry, hard, yeah. yep, my mistake. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Rush B six and one. Paralute five and three. Uh, Paralute seeing if they can take a game off of a better team to move up in the standings and maybe secure a playoff spot. There you go. All right, and then real quick, uh, out of Division D East, we have Frank's Furters, number one seed, versus Lucidology, number three. So it should be a good matchup. All righty, guys. Uh, that is going to get us pretty close here. Any closing thoughts? Well, no, uh, start us off with some closing thoughts. Yeah, I'll just uh, shout out B-Train for joining us tonight. Been a pleasure having you here, buddy. There you Thank go. You, I appreciate it. Uh, Ziltoid, any uh, any closing thoughts? Oh, well, hopefully we can get some more casting in. There you go. This, this yeah. week, me and B-Train. Sure. That'd be great. I'm still oh, yeah. trying to get off my feet to to do some of those casts as well. But again, the start of the week, I'm a little busy because it's, um, you know, we got our practices and stuff like that that we're doing a lot. But yeah. hopefully we can get some more in because oh, it's been sure. a lot of fun. I've been enjoying it. There you go. B-Train, closing thoughts. What do you got for us? Oh, closing thoughts. <laughs> Where do I begin? It's been so fun. <laughs> uh, honestly, thanks for guys for having me. Um, for anyone who is interested in trying to get a co-cast, or maybe you don't have your stuff set up and you want to cast, I'm always open. Hit me up. I'm in Alaska, so I can cast really late night games. Uh, I have a new cam, green screen, and mic coming from Amazon this week. So the setup is about to get litty. There you go. We're going to get some litty, <laughs> some litty setups. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I want to thank all of our panelists. We got Ziltoy, Wono, and I want to thank our special guest, B Train. I think it's this way. B Train. Uh, shout out quickly to all of our research analysts. Uh, that's B Med, Monkas, Negative Forty, Ryokai, Himibo, Satat, Chaotic Order. All you guys are pulling stats for us, making our life super easy, pulling them stats. Um, so shout out to you guys. Um, super great. And, uh, I think, uh, with that, this is third herder here saying adios amigos. And remember to stay safe in the nexus and always take your games to the edge.
just uh, texting my fiance. <laughs> Please don't enter room. <laughs> don't come Thanks. in. Yeah. <laughs> Special time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hanging out online with my internet friends. I messed that one up, but that's fine. <laughs> I kind of like how you said it. <laughs> oh, I, I want to say that was probably my favorite moment of any Rexar play. I think it was someone killed Misha, and you're like, somebody call Peter. <laughs> like, right in the middle of making all these calls. It was oh, yeah. Well, hopefully our editor is on their game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on mute, buddy. He transmuted. We're back! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to forget at one point. Thank goodness we made it like 40 minutes in. Yeah, whoever's editing this video, I sincerely apologize for that like 45 second nightmare that I put you through. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun with that one. <laughs>